Hi there, I'm Jeanette, also known as a little armager. From the thumbnail, you can already tell I will be covering how I made a 1970s wrap dress and benza from Folklorico Dancing. And happy National Hispanic Heritage Month, by the way. I will go into the significance as to why I chose to make a benza a little later in the video. Um, let's start with how this project began. So um, about a month ago, I went to Goodwill and found the most amazing bundle of 1960s and 1970s patterns, most of which they happen to be in my size. Um, there were about 18 patterns in the bundle and I bought them for $6.99. I can't tell you how amazing this find is because I was looking on eBay at people selling patterns. They were selling them by the lot and I just felt they were way too expensive. <laughs> out of the patterns that I found, the simplicity pattern 5683 stood out to me. Um, it's a pattern from 1973 and I thought it would be cool to try out because it's actually a wrap dress. It's a little bit different because it wraps around the back of as opposed to the front, like a lot of wrap dresses from the 70s tend to do. And for the fabric, I decided to use this lightweight cotton yellow gingham, which I also thrifted. I did make a mock-up and uh, now that I am starting to work through my stash of vintage fabric, I did promise myself that I have to make a mock-up for every project every single time or I risk ruining the fabric that I can't easily find again. Anyway, the mock-up came together pretty easily. I was kind of stumped with how the ties of the dress would be finished, but um, I just decided that I would be able to figure that out on the actual garment because it doesn't really have to do with the fit of the dress. I did also make a few other changes to the overall pattern, most of them being with the skirt patterns. I added a lot of width to the skirt pieces. Um, I needed the skirt to be just a little bit more goofy, so I added about like five inches to like the front panel. And yeah, I know this looks a little weird, but I am using a skirt pattern from a laughing moon pattern that I have. Um, it's like the back side piece. Um, it definitely helped with making the skirt just a little bit more A-frame shape, I would say. The other thing I wanted to mention is the pen I'm using. So I am using a Rixion pen. I think that's how it's said. It's the ones that um, if you apply heat to them, they disappear and I they are amazing. I love the fact that I can pick them up at Target, um, but they really do disappear with the heat of the iron, so I've been really enjoying them. Also here I'm just applying a little bit of interfacing. That's the part where the um, belt ties will go through. Okay, so... This is where I left off yesterday. I was able to go ahead and gather the sections at the bust and add and go ahead and sew the top bodice to the belt portion. Um, I did try this on and it is a little bit too low. I'm gonna have to go ahead and take out more fabric here and re-sew it together. I thought I had actually taken in enough, but I guess I have not. So that's a bit unfortunate, but I'll be able to fix it at the end of the project. Um, I am, <laughs> another thing I noticed is that I actually put the hole for the tie on the wrong side. It's supposed to be on the left side, but 
it's really not going to make too much of a difference. I'll just have to be mindful when I go ahead and sew the ruffle to the skirt. And today I'll be working on the skirt, adding pockets and adding the ruffle. I don't think I'm going to be able to get that all done today, but I will try my best to get most of it done. <laughs> Pockets. So another modification I made to the pattern. The pattern didn't come with pockets for some reason. I really did just wing the pattern for the pocket. I just looked one up on Google and then I just went ahead and drew it on some gift wrap paper that has a grid. Thing I wish that I did is just make the opening for my hand to go through just slightly larger. It is um, wide enough for my hand to comfortably go in, but like it would have been nice to just be a little bit bigger. But other than that, um, I think it went pretty well. I'm working on here is the ruffle piece that goes along the bottom of the skirt and that's the part that kind of reminds me of um, the velvas that you wear for Mexican folk dancing and anyway <laughs> that part was so time consuming because the piece was really 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 long I I honestly don't know how many yards it was but it was just so time consuming to go ahead and sew up all the panels together and then go ahead and ruche them. It also took a really long time to pin the ruffle trim to the skirt and kind of configure it in a way that uh, mimicked how the pattern instructions um, told you how to do it. So I finished sewing the ruffle trim on the dress and now I'm at the point where I can finally gather up the waistband on the dress. So that's what I'm doing and that's going to take quite a bit of time. wanted to show you the other side of my living room. So like this is like the really nice side that I try and keep clean but over like when I'm working on a project this is the other side and it gets so messy. So don't think that everything is perfect in here because it really isn't. <laughs> um, it gets really messy on this side when I'm working on projects. So 
as I'm getting closer to finishing the dress, I, I am actually really frustrated <laughs> in this um, video at this point um, because I felt like I was getting to a point where I was really close to being done and I just, the bodice really didn't fit the way I wanted it to. It was um, when I raised up the, the straps, um, it completely ruined the fit, the bodice. So uh, what I ended up doing is mocking up a, the bodice and making it a very um, sharp V instead of having any sort of curves. this bodice on last night. I am very happy with the fit and overall I am really really happy with how I took time to go ahead and just redo the top completely. Um, I have no idea how chaotic this video is. Um, I haven't gone in and started editing any of the footage yet so um, my apologies ahead of time but anyway this is just what happens sometimes. Um, these things happen, the plan changes midway through, so anyway, um, yeah, very happy. This is still very 1970s, the silhouette. I think today is the last day I'm going to go ahead and work on the dress because, um, I'm pretty sure I'm on the last step and let me go ahead and show you what I need to do today. So the pattern doesn't have any instructions at all for a lining. And so I kind of just made this up. It's um, roughly the original pattern here for the skirt of the dress. Um, and then I just um, went ahead and sewed it onto the interior ties. Um, and um, Actually, this is the part where I was the most confused um, on the pattern. I could not figure out exactly how they managed to sew on the ties and um, turn them inside out and have everything turn out fine in the end. So anyway, after doing reading the instructions over and over, I think I finally figured it out. And let's go ahead and get started on this last step. Okay, so I have no idea if um, this part of the video for the ties and the waistband make any sense. Um, I honestly had such a hard time not figuring it out at first how to make sure that everything came together in the end. So I really do hope I kind of make some sort of sense in this video at this point. figuring this out while I'm filming all this um so anyway I think I got it at first I was a little worried when I flipped over because um the tie here was all twisted so but anyway I, I think I figured it out um so I did leave like a substantial amount of tie and um band uh I did leave a substantial amount of the ties in the band not sewn together because um, I wanted to make sure I can easily flip this so everything works out. So um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just um, continue to sew the band and the ties together um, and I think it should be okay. 
So I just wanted to show you a close-up of the inside of the dress so you can see the hole where the ties will go through and those are reinforced with um, interfacing. And here is the inside. Um, so you can see that the bottom section of the ties and the band are not sewn to the dress. Or, um, and this is so that there was enough space for the ties to get turned inside out. And I am done with the dress portion of this video. I just wanted to go ahead and show you what it looks like to wrap the dress. And overall, I'm very happy with how the dress turned out. Um, I'm happy. Glad, I'm very glad that I went ahead and did that sharp V and the halter neckline. So why make a trenza? Well, when I was little, little Rominger, <laughs> about when I was seven years old, I used to perform folklorico dancing. And it was from, um, the one that I learned was uh, from the Jalisco region. And my favorite part of dancing, unsurprisingly, was getting dressed, um, wearing a falda, camisa, and a tenza with flowers and ribbons. I just want to shout out to my cousin Rosemary. Um, thank you so much for working on that costume for me. Um, you helped give me a chance to experience and enjoy my culture, and I am really really grateful for that um she watches these videos by the way so anyway thank you rosemary i really love when i can mash up my interests with clothing and it just felt right to fuse my love of vintage fashion with my Mexican heritage. This project has sparked my interest to find more ways to respectfully incorporate my culture into everyday clothing. I learned how to make the Denza from a few videos on YouTube. I will post links to them in the description. I just ask that you don't appropriate this project. It's not for everyone.
see my previous videos, you will know that I like to go ahead and show some reveal footage of my clothing costumes that I make. Before we go into that, just want to put it out there <laughs> like I usually do. All the little things such as liking, subscribing, and commenting on my videos really do help me and my channel keep growing and growing. Here's the reveal footage. Thank you everyone. 